today. Um, I get the pleasure of introducing Mr. Tyler Green. Tyler has been with us for about two years. Um, he started coming because someone invited him, and he has been here ever since. What a joy it has been to have him. Um, Tyler is going into the Marine Corps, and he leaves in two weeks. Oh, 13 days. We are below the two-week mark. Um, he will be going to San Diego and doing his training there, and then we'll go wherever they need him then. But Tyler has been such a joy to see grow in his faith, and I'm so excited that he is giving our um, sermon today. And so I'm going to invite Mr. Tyler Green up here to come share a word with you. Good morning. She just kind of stole my whole introduction. It's like the first part of this. Um, all right. So my name is Tyler, like I said, and I'm a graduate of Sepulpa, finally. Um, so the Marines live by three core values, and those core values are honor, courage, and commitment. And I'm here to talk to you about how those tie into your walk with Christ. So the first value I want to talk to you guys is about honor. The scripture that I chose comes out of, or that I chose, uh, comes out of Hebrews 13:18, which is, "Pray for us, for we are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things." The Marines honor their legacy and history uh, that they helped create. Uh, every Marine you're ever going to meet is prideful and honorable about the fact that they are a Marine. They wear 200-year-old uniforms and. They, you know, they participate in ceremonies dating back to before the 19th century. A good question is how can we honor God like that? Not by wearing 200-year-old uniforms, because it's kind of disgusting. <laughs> but in a lot of ways, we do honor Christ like that. We go to church on Sundays. We participate in Advent and Easter. Uh, we as Christians have a lot to honor ourselves. Recently, back in... July, July. Uh, I went on a mission trip with the youth to Atlanta, Georgia, and on our first day of mission work, our first job was extremely simple. We were to take lunch, these little sacks of lunches, take the sandwiches out so they can be refrigerated, and put everything else back in. So we were there with seven churches, six, seven, seven, seven churches. Our group was at a table. Every church was at their own little table. We took all of our sandwiches out, put it in, and then moved on, immediately broke in like two minutes. When we got away, everyone else was like four lunches in, maybe. They were looking at it like it was rocket science. So we go over and we start helping them, kind of showing them what to do. And I look up just long enough and I see a man, a huge smile on his face. So I walk over to the man, I talk to him, and I ask him, you know, is there anything he needs help with? If, if there's anything we can do for him. And, oh my gosh, I lost my place, sorry. And he turned to me and said, I've never seen a group of people that worked like this, who worked honorably and prideful like this before in my life. And me being me, I said, they're only sandwiches. They're not that big of a deal. <laughs> and he looked at me with the exact same smile and he said something that, I'll never ever forget in my entire life. He said, find pride in everything you do. It's a very short message, very short, one sentence long, but it gave me a sense of pride. It gave me a feeling that I'm going to chase forever. And it was for the first time that I had ever felt God talking to me through someone. It gave me a sense of honor and a sense to, it gave me a feeling that I'm going to chase forever throughout my entire life. So my first challenge of the day is to find honor in everything you do, whether it's your job, your faith, or anything really. Second, second core value is courage. It's one of my favorite words. Courage is simply overcoming, and mental, overcoming mental and physical fear. Nelson Mandela is quoted as saying, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. John Wayne kind of dumbed it down and said, courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. 
1 Corinthians 15.58 says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Marines have courage. As long as it's not illegal or immoral, they're going to do it, even if it's impossible. One of my biggest role models in, is a Marine. His name is John Bassalone. He served in World War II as a sergeant. Uh, he was in his church choir before he enlisted. He went from the Army, then he was in his church choir, and then enlisted in the Marines on a ship set for Guadalcanal. In 1942, he came under high fire from the Japanese Empire. Using a machine gun, he defended six other machine gun nests from invasion and overthrow. All of this he did while suffering third-degree burns on his left arm from the gun from the gun barrel. Yeah. Um, in 1945, he was killed in action in Iwo Jima after he single-handedly destroyed an enemy blockhouse and had killed hun that had killed hundreds of Marines in the hours previous. For his acts of courage and honor, he was awarded the military's highest award, the Medal of Honor. John Bassalone is the biggest role model to me because he is the face of pure courage and that's why I chose the scripture for or one of the scriptures for today because it speaks absolute volumes courage is all over the Bible Paul shows courage by continuing to preach after receiving death threats and being in prison Noah builds a boat because he was told to without any other input but the biggest one comes from Jesus Christ because as he hung on the cross dying for our sins for sins that he didn't commit and felt pain that was wrongfully put on him he faced it with courage and honor oh my gosh I lost my place again I should have printed this off I should have printed this off so my second challenge is to find courage in everything you do uh, so first is on first is find honor and everything second is find courage the last of the values is commitment the scripture for this is very simple it comes from the book of Kings and may your hearts be fully committed in the, to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commands as at this time the Marine Corps motto is Semper Fidelis which is Latin for always faithful and their other saying is once a Marine always a mean a Marine which shows pure commitment First Sergeant Bradley Casal was a Marine deployed in Fallujah back in 2005. When he saw, when he was in a gunfight in Fallujah, he saw a Marine laying next to him, badly wounded. He went over to him and asked if he was okay. And in that moment, he saw a grenade fall 10 feet away from him. Without thought of himself, he threw himself over that Marine and sh shielded him from the blast of the grenade, suffering third degree burns on his legs and destroying his back. That Marine stood up, First Sergeant Casal stood up, got his Marine up, grabbed his rifle, and continued on in the gunfight throughout the entire day with third degree burns. That's pure commitment to me. That is absolute commitment to anything that you can do. Paul, like that, was an extremely committed Christian. He taught the gospel. He served God by preaching to anyone that he could, to his brothers and sisters in Christ. And in a way, we can be committed like that. We're committed to this church. We're committed to loving and serving God. We are committed to s the seniors here for committed for something to, or we're committed to something for 12 years that we honestly didn't think was going to end, sadly. <laughs> that's, for us, we're 18 and 19, so that's the majority of our life that we were watching, some, or we were going to school every day. Lots of commitment. Sadly. I've already talked about it, but while on this mission trip to Atlanta, um, on our last day of serving, some of us had to wash feet outside of a homeless men clinic, or a homeless men shelter. And while washing feet, we were told to make conversation. It's very hard to make conversation when someone's foot is six inches away from you. Extremely, extremely hard. Uh, we were told to ask questions like where they were from, where they're going, how they got to Atlanta, stuff like that. So while we were doing it, you know, trying not to be awkward about the fact that there's a foot six inches from us, ready to roundhouse kick us as soon as we blink, um, 
I saw, or we met a man, and we asked the same questions, uh, and he's from California. He was told, he said that he was told by God to come here, or to come to Atlanta, and meet someone. So this man took whatever money he had, took whatever he had, put it in his car, and drove as far as he could. He didn't make it all the way to Atlanta, so he left his car on the side of the road and continued to go to Atlanta on foot. He made it there and he's been wandering ever since looking for that person. He doesn't know if it's a loved one, he doesn't know if it's a significant other, he just knows that he is there to find someone. And so I asked him, how do you not know that you haven't met this person? And he said, he's going to, he'll know. He will feel God when he knows. It's more commitment to God than I've seen in a very, very long time. Um, so my third challenge, my last challenge, is to find something and stay committed to it. Like First Sergeant Casal, like Paul, and like the random man whose foot I washed, who walked to Atlanta. So like I said, the Marines live with these values that tie perfectly into our faith and our walk with Christ. And as I leave in, as I leave today and as I leave in two weeks, I want you guys to think about that. Be honorable, be courageous in everything, and stay committed to everything. Uh, before I do close this, there are a few people that I want to thank. First off is my family, which a lot of them are right there. Uh, they've been through everything with me. All the paperwork signed, all the events that they had to attend. Uh, my second person, or my second group of people are Pat and Heather Graham, which aren't here. But they've given me absolute support through everything. Uh, and then Emily Wagner, she's right there. That's Emily. Uh, she was here, she was with me throughout the entire enlistment process. She was the one that pretty much said, hey, you need to be a Marine, because that's what I want for you. And then I want to thank Kira for showing me that with a strong will, anything and everything is possible. Thank you guys.